Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Money Matters. What are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about a £100 million decision and we're going to talk about deciding not to buy a property. I've got a super duper special, my favourite ever guest in the world. I don't normally have favourites, but on this occasion, it is the lovely Aniko. Hello. So, Aniko, I talk a lot about, or we talk a lot about, brickwork and paperwork, don't we? Yes, we do. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with it, and I did it for many years, but if, if you're a tradesman, or if you're doing DIY or something, there's a maximum to how much you can earn per hour, isn't there? Mm-hmm. On the other hand, if you get good with one of these, and your specialist subject, one of those. Mind, yeah. Mindset. What's the upper limit? to your hourly rate? Well, I suppose it depends on your uh, ambitions. I would say it's unlimited. Mm. When we were deciding, shall we buy this apartment, shall we not buy this apartment, something Aniko always says is the quality of your life will be determined by the quality of the questions that you ask. Indeed, absolutely. So what is the right question to ask when you're thinking, shall I buy something or not? Is it about that in isolation or is it about compared to? No, it is, obviously. You want to see what choices you have and what is the best choice what are the best options to have and yeah whether to buy this or not is a very isolated question and our expertise we've been or I've been a property investor in the UK for 41 years and it hasn't because you know obviously she's half my age but um, (laughs) the thing we know about most from a property investment point of view is the UK isn't it yeah so our question was shall we deploy some pounds here or shall we deploy some pounds in the UK and this apartment round numbers is 25 million it's like 260 square meters or something. Plus the terraces. Yeah. yeah. It, the actual indoor space is 260 and then there's another whatever it is, 200 terraces or something. Yeah. But the way property is valued here, it's uh, X amount per square meter and they don't include the terraces. This particular block, uh, and it isn't just the apartment, it's the spa, it's the chauffeurs, it's the, you know, it's everything, it's all the services. The price here is essentially 100,000 a square meter. Mm-hmm. If we bought it, it would save us paying rent, wouldn't it? It's a little bit less than £50,000 a month, but it's more than €50,000, isn't it? Yes. So it's kind of 50k, let's call it 50k. Yeah. And then there's another 5000 of service charges, whatever. If we bought this place, we wouldn't have to pay rent, Mm because we would own it, but we still have to pay the service charge. Yeah. When you're doing that kind of analysis, how much would we save? Well, £50,000 a month, which is £600,000 a year. £600,000 divided by 25 million is 2.2%. Yeah, it's not um, as a year. We wouldn't dream of buying something with a 2% yield, would we? Uh, No, not as an investment, no. No. It's a slightly different decision because it's emotional, it's your yeah. home, it's, that's where you live, but as an investment, no. No. In the UK, where we invest, minimum yield we're looking for is 8%, yeah. ideally 10% plus. Mm-hmm. Simplistically, if we deploy our money here versus the UK, we'll get roughly four times less rent mm-hmm. per pound. Yes. Anyway, we made a decision, didn't we? Yes, we did. We ran the numbers. So the next piece of paperwork that we want to share with you is, welcome to Monaco, is that we just decided to, instead of buying this apartment, we love it, Aniko's made it really lovely, so we don't want to move. So we just said, well, we've got a two year contract, let's do three more years. Mm -hmm. And obviously we negotiated a few bits and pieces, but long story short, it's going to cost us 600 grand a year for three years, which is a 1.8 million pound contract. Yep. So we are just about to sign a 1.8 million pound contract. How about that, boys and girls? We've decided not to buy this apartment, we're going to spend 1.8 million living here for the next three years instead. And because it's Monaco, they just sent us it. <laughs> well, they didn't post it because that's not really what you do in Monaco. So they, it was hand delivered to our concierge who brings it up, to, you know, whatever. But the long story short is we're, we are about to sign a contract, 1.8 million on our own. <laughs> and then we just got to leave it with the concierge and it will get delivered back. And over the next three years, it's going to cost us another 1.8 mil. And even better that the negotiation is I for signing a three-year contract I wanted some extras yeah. um, that's all happened through WhatsApp so <laughs> literally I was just back and forth back and forth and yeah. here we go we have a piece of paper to sign now anyway ready? you ready, ready for the paper indeed this might take a while because we've got to sign in triplicate here you go and here it is <sighs> in triplicate and being Monaco, we've both individually got to initial every page. Okay, you do it first. You do it first. Really? 
Yeah. All right. I don't speak French, yeah. so at least I yeah. will follow. <laughs> anyway, the I'm starting. The contract is all in French. Oh, um, so I got it all first um, translated to English, then. Should I do the whole lot? Yeah, do it all, please. So yes, and the process is that after this, uh, this will be um, registered, and it will take part on when we renew next time our residency. We can just uh, provide this document as the official, uh, it is our rental agreement. Good point. This actually is an important, it's a very it important document important, for yeah. lots and lots of reasons. And it isn't just where we're going to live, it's all sorts of other stuff like our residency cards, which is the official permission to actually live here. Yeah. The final thing that I just want to talk about, you know, and obviously Annika and I want to talk about other things as well, is that these contracts, one of the attractions here in Monaco is that essentially these contracts are FRI contracts, aren't they? Yep. They're commercial leases. Everything is loaded in favour of the landlord. the landlord big time here so you might think well is that not a reason to you know potentially favor monaco over the uk and yes it is because as tenants we've essentially got no rights well we have we've got lots of rights all those rights go out the window if we don't pay the rent on time mm -hmm. so with covid and in scotland uh, there's things like eviction bans and they're getting rid of section 21 and you know and all that stuff here in Monaco you don't pay the rent you're out sunshine and you're gonna lose your deposit and for us the deposit is three months rent so if we default that's gonna cost us 150 grand so we ain't gonna do that <laughs> well, we're not gonna do it anyway you've got the whole contractual situation this versus a UK tenancy this is a lot better for the landlord. So you might think, well, as a property investor, do you not want that? And what about capital appreciation in Monaco? Surely that's more than the UK. It's not actually, it's about the same. And it's from a different base, obviously, per square meter or per property. But typically, property here in Monaco goes up by seven to 10% a year. It typically doubles every seven to 10 years, the same as the UK. So we can get four times more rent and the capital appreciation will be about the same. But there's two more things I wanted to cover. The same amount of capital here, you can't really get mortgages. Well, you can get mortgages here, but it's 50% max, 10-year yeah. term yeah. max, repayment 100% of the time, and they reserve the right to renew it every three years. Mm. So you've got no certainty at all. So essentially, our 25 million here would be completely ungeared. And so in terms of capital appreciation, let's say you've got 10% in the first year, 10% on 25 million is 2.5 million. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the UK, if you've used your 25 million with a 75% mortgage and you've got 100 million of property, well, a 10% increase in capital values isn't two and a half, it's 10. And you might think, oh, all about tax. Well, yes, there are very few taxes here in Monaco. But here's the thing, in the UK, if you don't sell it, and if you just keep remortgaging it, what's the tax rate on that? Uh, same as Monaco. Nothing. Four times the rent, four times the capital appreciation because of the gearing, zero tax in both cases, and here for me is the killer. If you look out that window over there, you'll see the Mediterranean Sea. At some point, somebody is probably gonna put another tower in front of that view of the Mediterranean Sea. Could happen, we are quite high up. Yeah, but yeah I know, it's, it's unlikely and it might, you know, but in 50 years time? Yeah, you never know. So we go and buy this apartment for 25 million and it goes up in value. Eventually, someone puts another tower block that's even bigger in front of it. What happens to the capital value? Half, Half. at this point. You've spent 25 million and over the next 10 years it goes up to 50 million. In 10 years time, someone doesn't even actually build it. They just put the planning permission in to build it that will halve the capital value back to where you started. That is never gonna happen in the UK, mm. ever. And then you need to take a view on currency risk. Most of our expenditure is euros, isn't it? Mm. I have more faith in pounds than I do in euros, simply because the UK is a sovereign country that can control its own affairs now with Brexit. And I'm not saying I'm for or against Brexit, this is just you know harsh economic observation. The EU is a whole mixture of countries, some of which are very strong financially, like Germany, and some of which are very weak, like Greece and Italy. Something that will be at the back of your mind making this kind of decision is exchange rate risk, currency risk. I don't know if you've read this book. Uh, if you haven't, then consider giving it a go. Um, uh, the author is absolutely, no, the author's me. It's, uh, it's absolutely wonderful. Anyway, we have, but we both live, we live in Monaco because of property, don't we? Yep. In one shape or form. Uh, we've just spent 1.8 million. 
<laughs> Imagine that. While you've been watching this video, we have spent 1.8 million, more than you have, probably, unless <laughs> you've been doing something completely crazy. Uh, so anyway, comments below, especially if you'd like to see more of Anko, because you don't see her very much. Would you like to say goodbye to all these lovely people in the internet land? Yes, indeed. Just always remember, the quality of your questions will determine the quality of your life. Mm. Thank you, Mrs. Smith, much appreciated. You, each and every one of you, are wonderful. You have all got the potential to do more than we've done. We're both normal people, yeah? Mm. I left home at the age of 17 with 170 quid. I now live in Monaco. Aniko was brought up in what was then communist Hungary. She lives here in Monaco with me. And it wasn't like, and I've had this before and I just want to completely knock this out of the park. Oh, but Aniko's so lovely. She's married a multimillionaire. She's so lucky. Well, guess what? Before she married me, she was already a multimillionaire. It wasn't like she was lucky. It was like I was lucky. It's... A marriage of equals. I thank you. So, it's yeah, I knew she was going to say that. You, each and every one of you, are wonderful. The thing that you need to do that most of you haven't yet learned how to do is give yourself permission to be great. We give ourselves permission, and here's where we are. Don't be embarrassed to claim your destiny. So when I tell you, you are wonderful, I mean it. You've been wonderful. We've been Paul Nanico. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.